Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. I just want to ask you a quick question, and that's about um, the fact that as atheists believe in God, you know, there's absolute evidence to show that as atheists you believe in God. And I'm going to provide you with that evidence that you have faith in God. Okay? <laughs> and um, I'm going to ask you a series of questions and you know if you could honestly answer them the first is, question is do you believe in the scientific method the answer will be yes the second question I want to ask you is how do you know the scientific method is valid you probably reply because of utility because we can do experiments and and uh, it works and we're able to produce knowledge and information and be able to develop uh, various utilizing uh, things from the scientific method okay the third question I want to ask this utilizing aspects of science uh, what are the foundations of it well it's based on observation and experiment okay how do you know the observation and experiment is valid and then you say well because it, it it works but now you're arguing in a circle there's a certain there's a certain issue within the scientific method that you as an atheist assume but you cannot prove and this thing in the scientific method that you uh, assume and that you cannot prove okay can only be explained in terms of belief in God rather than from your scientific so-called methodology and this assumption that you have about the scientific method should make you realize that you need to become a Christian and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ so what is this assumption the assumption is the uniformity of nature what I mean by this is when you go to sleep at night as an atheist you presume that tomorrow will come that the future is going to come in in the morning when you wake up you expect the world to be there you expect everything to be there you 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 expect that now you've no reason to expect that based on your position because your position as an atheist is that everything in the world started everything in the universe started by chance that's your basic foundation of everything by the way so everything started by chance but then these laws came and these laws work okay but there's no logical reason and to explain why these laws keep being consistent the way they are if they came by chance and then suddenly settled down into some kind of or orderly structure okay there's no reason to expect that these these uh, laws that are, are that we can observe are just going to be like that tomorrow they it could change okay we just expect and, and and believe that it just will be but we have no reason we have no logical evidence or understanding we just have a belief that tomorrow will be will come okay and so deep down in your heart you know really that there is a God that the uniformity of nature cannot be explained purely on a scientific basis you just accept that those laws and the things that we observe will be as they are, are doing whatever they are doing uh, on the earth around the earth in the universe or whatever there is there is from your perspective a possibility at any moment of time everything could just disappear and disintegrate there is no reason logical reason to say that at any moment of time these laws will always continue for at any moment of time they could stop they could change and it's no good saying well no that's not true because if you observe a it will end in B and that's the way it is and it just continues no no 
you, 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 you're moving away from the problem the problem is it all came by chance for some reason it settled down from your perspective into some kind of orderly s structure you, or, or processes you, you might even say within that processes uh, there are uh, chance fluctuations you might get even more philosophically deep uh, scientifically speaking but at the end of the day there's no reason why uh, quarks and protons etc are going to work the way they do um, and continually work the way they do or any laws or any aspect of the created order continue to do that without the presumption that they will be like that you have to presume that they will there's no reason to say that they will and that's because there's a belief that there is a God who set up these things within your own heart uh, and these laws and these various things of nature that we see that are working uh, in in rhythmic order were set up by God and they will they will be there because he is faithful and he's not just going to let these various laws just suddenly uh, collapse or suddenly change in such a way that it will end all of life within a moment or a second of your life and so in the morning when you wake up you know there's going to be a tomorrow and it's not based on science it's based deep down on the fact that you know that all these laws are being upheld by a faithful God so I would encourage you uh, to listen to these words when you hear them and remember the uniformity of nature is a proof to you as an atheist that you already believe in God and there's no way around it atheist and you can argue all that you want but at the end of the day you're suppressing the truth in unrighteousness the wrath of God is being revealed it says in Romans from heaven against all the godless and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by the wickedness the reason why you're an atheist today is not because there isn't any evidence it's because you're suppressing the truth since what may be known about God is plain to them it, God is saying it's plain to you atheists you know that scientific method cannot account for the uniformity of nature you've no reason to expect a tomorrow but you expect a tomorrow because deep down you know that the universe and the world is held in God's hands and because he is faithful the laws of nature will continue to work and so therefore you expect a tomorrow all right since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them for since the creation of the world God's invisible qualities his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen being understood from what has been made so that men are without excuse God has made the world and we've seen how we go back to the right to the end of the line to the, to these laws that we we know exist and the various aspects of nature and how nature works and how the universe works and God is saying to you have been clearly seen being understood from what has been made so that men are without excuse so as atheists you're without excuse for although they knew God they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him but their thinking became futile so you've made yourself intellectually futile in your arguments and their foolish hearts were darkened you've darkened your own heart you blinded your own mind to the evidence that is there before you that you know there is to a tomorrow but you have no reason to base it on but you will not think logically where that's leading you to believe in a God who is upholding all these laws and although they claim to be wise they became fools and you claim to be quite wise and you claim to be clever but you are now looking foolish and their foolish hearts were dark and although they claimed to be wise they became fools and exchanged the glory of immortal God for images made to look like mortal man and birds and animals and reptiles and so you glorify yourself and think you are clever but now you become fools and then you become move into sexual immorality and idolatry 
You push God out and you make film stars and pop stars into idols. You make millionaires and rich people into idols. And you glorify the flesh and sin and sex and, uh, and sexual immorality and come up with new perverted sexual ways of, of doing things. All because you will not look at creation. All because you will not see beyond creation is a God who is upholding all the natural processes. And you know that there is a tomorrow because it's based on this almighty God. But you will deny that and push that down and seek to become foolish and futile and then seek to bring images and glorying yourself in idolatry and glorying in sexual impurity and immorality rather than glorying in the eternal almighty God and you call yourself an intellectual. You are a pervert from the biblical perspective. For you will not go God's way in purity and holiness but you will go in your sexual immoral way. All because you denied the uniformity of nature and what it meant and how it pointed to God. This is what the Bible is saying, folks. The text of the Holy Word of God. Therefore God gave them over in sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served created things rather than the Creator who was forever praised our men. And you say, ha ha! We're clever, we have the scientific method, and God says, you're clever, okay, you don't want to worship me, you go and do whatever, and you worship yourself, and then you go off into sexual impurity and perversion, and then you get even worse, God hands you over, and says, okay, if that's what you want, you go and do it, and so secular society goes sexually immoral, sets up things that are immoral, and that's God's judgment and saying, you want to do that, you go and do it, if you want to live by that, you go and do it, but you're going to uh, come under a whirlwind of suffering and problems and judgment from me, because when I let you do that, when I let you go your immoral way, that's me judging you, saying, you think you're clever, then you go and do it, and when you go and do it, you as a, most, uh, a democratic society will fall flat on your face and you will collapse. And believe it or not, folks, the Western culture is on the verge of collapse. We're seeing it in the banking, in the banks, we're seeing it in the politics, we're seeing it on the ground in society. We are on the verge of collapse. And it's down to the fact that as you people will not look to God and realize he is the God of all creation. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lust, even the women exchanging natural relations for unnatural ones. The same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed indecent acts with other men who received themselves the due penalty of their perversion. Furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, He gave them over to depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. They have become filled with every kind of wicked, evil, greed, depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil, and they disobey their parents. They are senseless, faithless, heartless, ruthless, although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death. That is a perfect description of our modern society in our Western cultures today. We have gone downhill, and we have gone downhill because you think you're clever. You think you're cleverer than God, and because you think you're cleverer than God, God has left you to your own devices as a society, and now as a society, you are descending into immorality, and you are paying the penalty for denying such an eternal or powerful God. So when you go to bed tonight, and you wake up in the morning expecting a new day, remember the reason why you expected a new day. It wasn't because of your scientific method. It was because behind the scientific method is the uniformity of nature, which you know con continues because Almighty God upholds it. And that should lead you to repent and turn to Almighty God through Jesus Christ, who died for you and gave himself for you, and you know that he did that. And Jesus loves you. He died for you. It's now time for you to repent of your immorality. And come to Christ and trust in Him and be washed in the blood. And know His goodness and kindness. And know His love and grace. And know that He wants you to be His. Come to me, all you are weak and heavy laden, that I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And God wants you today. So it's up to you, folks.
Turn to the Lord. Or go your own way. 